peace makers in Jesus' name. So I invite you friends with me. Let us envision how we can know and show the peace of Christ and let us affirm our fervent hope. May the peace of Christ be with us each and all. And we sing this simple child song to remind us of how that peace can work. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out through you and me, bringing water to the desert, setting all the captives free. Now will you join me in our prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may receive with joy what you say to us today. Amen. If you have your scripture insert, I invite you to join me in praying this psalm, Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations of the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. I can remember so many hymns and anthems that draw on these words, can't you? That remind us to continually praise and give thanks to God. This morning I'm going to be reading uh, aloud verses 21 through 28 of the 15th gospel according to Matthew. Jesus is teaching about purity of heart when he encounters this woman, a Canaanite woman in need. So Jesus left the place where he was and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost chief of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions of our lives be truly pleasing in your sight, O oh God. For you and you alone are our rock, our redeemer, and our only hope in this world and in the world to come. It is in the name of the living Christ, the teaching one, that we pray. Amen. Well, this is where the Revised Common Lectionary 
can be somewhat of a, a challenge, if not an outright stumbling block. And there have been years in this cycle when I have chosen for one reason or another to preach on a different scripture for the day than the gospel. Do you know, and I've probably shared this story with y'all, my very first time to preach in big church at my home church, University Methodist in Austin, was on this text. <laughs> now, it took me a little while to realize that rather than being flattered and so honored to be given the opportunity to preach in big church, I was, <laughs> well, it was an opportunity, but it was also an opportunity for the senior pastor not to have to preach on this text <laughs> and maybe to see how the kid would handle it, you know, how, how I would do. So I don't have the text of that sermon, mercifully. I didn't keep it. <laughs> oh, I do remember wrestling with it, though, and coming up with what feels now like maybe a little sidestep interpretation, although it could be true. When Jesus said that thing that he said, he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He's Jesus, you know. Jesus would never, you know, knowingly insult somebody like that with language like that. You know what he was doing? He was setting an example so that his followers could learn a thing or two. And he, he knew the woman's faith and her love would, would come. Anyway, <laughs> he didn't mean it. He was teaching a lesson. Maybe. Maybe. Jesus has been teaching about purity and about it's what comes through us that manifests what is true about us. And then here comes this annoying woman. And that was the description of her, and he meant it, by a bishop who came to preach in the seminary chapel. He called her an annoying woman, and the disciples certainly find her so. Lord, send her away. She's shouting. So what's annoying about her? She's a Canaanite. She's shouting at a group of men. She is insistent, and she won't go away. And what she's shouting about is also a shameful thing. She has a daughter who's possessed. Goodness gracious, she is so annoying. And we know now that we still struggle, do we not, with what we would most likely interpret as a form of mental illness. We still struggle with it as if it is a form of demonic possession. I mean, the language that we use to describe conditions of mental illness, including addiction, um, is that it's cunning and baffling and powerful and it takes over the person to the point where it's kind of hard to separate the person from the affliction. We still struggle with that. Troubling, annoying, and what are we to make of this story today? What are we to learn from it today? Well, I'm going to be reading some remarks from a commentary by, by a seminary professor who struggled with it too. And I just was so, I found her, her words so thought provoking that I'm, I'm just gonna share some of those with you today. And I want you to think with me. And here's one thing that we can do together, not shy away from the difficulty of this text. You know, not, not run away or code it over with some kind of easy, um, he didn't mean it answer, but rather think together about what we can learn. And I think there is something to learn because ultimately Jesus does see and Jesus does respond to the humanness of this woman and to her very human mother's love and 
to the insistence of her faith that holy healing can come even to her, a Canaanite, even to her possessed daughter, even to them. And that grace is theirs to claim. And it's her passionate love that drives that. But not to shy away from the question, what's wrong with what Jesus says? Well, a great deal. There's a great deal wrong with what he says. We know, don't we, that calling people by animalistic names individuals or groups of people is a way of dehumanizing them. If not demonizing, definitely dehumanizing them. So Leah Shadi, the professor from a seminary in Kentucky, she, um, she chews on the word this way. We can animalize and dehumanize people with our language. If a person's not truly human, logic dictates they can be dismissed, even brutalized, even exterminated. Now, she says, certainly this is not what Jesus intends when he calls the woman a dog. But his words do make us cringe. And his exchange with the woman whose tribe was outside his own, when she is begging for healing for her daughter, Jesus' words, she says, are like fingernails on the chalkboard. Ouch, when he says what he says. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She says, this is in the category of things I wish Jesus had never said. <laughs> what are we to do with these words? Well, she goes to scholars that she trusts, and one of them is one that I love too, Amy Jill Levine, who's a Jewish New Testament scholar at Vanderbilt Divinity School. And she went to another colleague, colleague Jerry Sumney, who teaches New Testament at her seminary, Lexington Theological Lutheran Seminary. She says, I have to say, there's no way after consulting with them around the conclusion that what Jesus says is problematic at best. Jesus is calling both the woman and her people dogs. Now that would have been an insult, a cross-cultural insult during his time, just as it is today. And why would he say such a thing? She says it's a complicated question, but we need to have, we have to ask it in tandem with another question. What do we make of the woman who replies so cleverly and bravely, but humbly too. And it totally shifts the dynamic in the moment. She replies, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's hands. Now imagine the scene, she says, a hush coming over the crowd to see how Jesus is going to respond. He could have fired back, how dare you? You need to learn your place. And then told his disciples to make her go away. But instead, he responds, woman, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And the daughter is healed. She goes on to say, the point then of this text is to show what Jesus' healing looks like in a way that upends our expectations. The original readers of the gospel would have recognized a familiar trope of a person in a subordinate position cleverly getting the better of a superior. The story does two things. It emphasizes the great faith of the woman and it shows us that Jesus is a model teacher. She goes on to ask a model teacher by calling the woman a dog? How can that be? Now here's where she says something challenging. He's a model teacher because he changes his mind. 
Jesus? Let's think about that. Jesus can learn. Jesus can change. Now she goes on to talk about how challenging it is for us to think about Jesus needing to learn anything, you know, even shocking, offensive. Jesus was perfect, wasn't he? Why would the son of God need to listen and learn from anybody, let alone a lowly woman desperate for healing who's not one of his own people? But remember, she reminds us, for us Christians, Jesus is human as well as divine. And as a human, he was a product of his time. His people did not accept her people. Neither of their tribes got along. Insults were traded between their peoples for centuries. It's only natural that he would respond to the woman the way he did, but that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it okay. Amy Jill Levine, in conversation with Dr. Shadi said, a model teacher is one who can learn. A model teacher is one who can learn. If Jesus had nothing to learn, and if he's not going to listen to others, then he's really not a teacher. He's not in relationship, and he's not fully human. Isn't that interesting to think about? So what can we learn from this exchange and from this story today? Well, one thing we can learn is that our words matter. Dehumanizing with our language is not okay. It's never been okay. Insulting people that we disagree with is not Christian, not in the truest, purest sense of our living true to our calling to love one another as we have been loved. And our words, they matter. Calling people animals, dehumanizing people is wrong and dangerous and antithetical and not constructive, not helpful. And in this age in which through social media and so many accesses to so many words, I think it's important to take a breath and consider what kind of language we are using ourselves, what kind of language we're giving credence to by paying attention to it, and what kind of language we can choose to use instead. And deeper underneath that, to honor the woman's personhood and that of her daughter is ultimately what happens and holy healing happens. Grace is available even to her the Canaanite woman, the annoyingly shouting, desperate mother and her daughter. No one ultimately is outside the fold or the access to that healing grace. Dr. Shadi goes on to say that this passage we can take from the Bible like so much as descriptive, not necessarily prescriptive, just because Jesus uses those words does not mean we follow his example in that way. It's not an acceptable thing to do, but the good news is that we too can learn. We can learn. We can change our attitudes. We can see people in a more human and humane way. We can make different choices. In his final response, Jesus models what it looks like to open 
and initiate healing. And we can change with our faith, our trust in grace, minding our thoughts, mending our words perhaps, making ourselves open to participating with Christ in the healing work of his grace that is so, so very needed in these times and in all times. I look forward to conversation with you about this story, about how it may be speaking to you, about what's problematic in how we're reflecting on it and how it's working in your life. That's how scripture continues to live and help us grow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we can do that because we know that we do have a wonderful friend in the Lord. And that's what this hymn is about. Let's sing together what a friend we have in Jesus. Friends, let's enter into a time of prayer together. Together, let's pray for all who are struggling, suffering, and in need today. All of those who are dealing with with physical illness, certainly all of those afflicted um, in our land and around the world with the virus we're so keenly aware of, but also there are all kinds of other hurts that people experience. Think of those who come to mind. And if you're in the company of a friend you want to share that person or those person's names with, that's one way 
we claim that friendship and kinship in the Lord. For all of those who suffer today, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray today for people who are struggling economically in these times. One in five families in our land are experiencing some form of food insecurity. One in five families. And that's just an estimate. People who are unemployed or underemployed or uh, experiencing or may experience homelessness, people who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for um, those experiencing the consequences of wildfires and other natural disasters in the midst of a pandemic. My goodness, the challenges are immense. And let's pray for the first responders, for those who are uh, peace officers and first responders, emergency workers, and all healthcare workers, including those in our Eden Hill community, and those who work in the hospice field, helping persons at the end of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, let's remember as we pray to count our blessings. You know, I'm, I tend to pray by, you know, giving God a laundry list of my needs or my worries or my woes or what needs fixing, you know, helping, healing, help me, help me. I pray that a lot. I need to remember to say thank you, thank you as often and to lift up all the blessings. So right now, I invite you to take a moment, think about the blessings of your life, including the fact that you are awake today and that we are together in this holy moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for guiding our prayers and our inclinations toward you this day. Keep us tuned in, Lord. Mind our thoughts, help us mend our words, and give us the ability to stay plugged in and connected to the true source, which is you. Your mercy, your righteousness, and your loving, life-giving will. Lord Jesus, thank you for shining your light on our path. It's in your name and for your sake that we pray. Amen. We also practice with one another with prayers of confession, knowing that we are uh, so in need of grace and we have access to that grace and its healing capabilities. Let's confess our sins before God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, in your presence, we must face the sinfulness of our nature and the errors of our ways intended and accidental. You alone know how often we have failed by wandering from your paths, wasting your gifts, and underestimating your love. Have mercy upon us, O God, for we have broken your requirements for justice and overlooked opportunities for kindness. Humble us with your truth and raise us by your grace that we may more nearly be the people of Christ and the witnesses of your spirit. Amen. Well, friends, we can trust this very good news today. 
The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So with humble and grateful hearts, we may declare with faith, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And let's pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your continued generous donations, those of you who continue to contribute to our chapel fund. And it's going to good purposes in helping to alleviate hunger in our community and helping students who are in need in our, in our area. So let's bless our offerings today with this prayer. Bless our time, our talents, and our treasure to your service, O God. For you are our strength, our shield, and our solace. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. One more old favorite hymn that reminds us of how we can rest in the blessed assurance of our connection to God in Christ. Let's sing together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long So I do look forward to conversation with you and connection with you in all kinds of ways this week. And I hope wherever your journey takes you, that you take and keep this blessing with you. May the peace of God that surpasses all our small human powers of understanding keep your hearts and minds centered in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ the Lord. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. And let's sing what we hope will be true. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.